the title there um 2021 reflections the hidden costs of pandemic era nightlife and it was a really good into so a really good article because it touched upon a lot of the things that i've been thinking about and it also gives you a kind of a glimpse into what it must feel like to kind of go through the pandemic as a professional kind of musician or artist or dj right because it's obviously a bit of a it's, it's a bit of a moonshot to have that kind of career because obviously it's a career that everyone wants it's a very in-demand job and it's not a lot of you know uh places for you to go where you can kind of get paid to do the job or you know there's not a lot of spaces for you to go and get paid or you be professional so you spend a lot of time doing it for free doing it out of pocket and then you finally do end up becoming somewhat successful you're probably a lot mature in your age you're not super young with some exceptions there are some people that make you on the 18 but for the most part you make it you know you make it when you're meant to make it but when you do make it you kind of you, you shouldn't no one could blame you for thinking oh finally i've got here and kind of rest up i'm not going to be able to you know i won't need to go work in the office shop anymore you kind of decide okay this is my gig no one's going to blame you for thinking that and then out of nowhere of course a pandemic happens and all your plans and your kind of hopes are completely get dashed out the window and the career that you just got settled into that you've been hustling and and trying for your entire life to make it now gets completely pulled away from you and there's no indication of when you're ever going to get it back and if you're ever going to get it back in a state that you had it in the first place that's the brutal part of it because it's one thing getting your career back but then getting it back and it doesn't look like anything you did previously that must hurt too and then of course it must become it must be um hard to kind of uh rationalize in your head because in some respects you know you're grateful because you know you have friends who are legitimately on the bread line who are having to go to like food shelters and whatnot um who have maybe had to move back in with their parents but still for you because you used to play 50 gigs a, a month and now you're down to 25 you can be excused for still feeling a little bit torn up and still wondering why and when am i ever going to get my job back when am i ever going to get my dream back or my dream job back and this kind of article i think kind of gives you a good insight into it and i'm going to read a bit of it for you now it says as follows at my first party in 2021 i remember surveying the sprawl of the people or rather the limbs before me thrashing around with feral muscular intensity their grippling hands the sweat matted hair and the contorted faces presented the primary emotion we all felt over the year of sensory deprivation instantaneable inst inst incest instant why can't i say that word instatiable hunger <laughs> for almost two years our worlds have been compacted into our bedrooms or flat shares leaving us greedy for the expansion and expression of this summer's reopening we crave the anonymity of a heaving um of a heaving crowd and the fated embrace of an alluring stranger and for good reason studies have shown that synchronized movement and the ecstatic joys of self-loss are key to human happiness which i definitely agree which again which explains why people were sort of like drawn to these play graves like a flipping moth to a flame do you know what i mean they couldn't keep their hands off it people were it seemed like people's first reaction when the pandemic first struck and it was red hot was to go and rave was to go and get drunk was to go and get high was to just go and just forget about the realities of life and now it's making a lot more sense at the time it seemed really selfish i think i reported on them a couple of times on my podcast about oh what's wrong with these people why can't they just stay at home blah, 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 blah. but if you think about it really it was just a primal reaction to such dread that was going on around around you so you're thinking to yourself you know what if we're all going to go out if we're so if we're all going to die i might as well die doing something that i actually enjoy as opposed to lying down in, in my bed under my duvet and i completely understand that and i think we all kind of sympathize with that now unless you're you know one of those crazy people that believes you know we should be under lockdown forever i think most people can kind of look at those play graves and kind of think you know what i get it I, again i wouldn't have gone I, I don't regret i didn't go but i get it um da -da -da -da. Dance off, let me get the charger in. Du -du 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 -du. Studies, yeah. Um, as social creatures, we thrive when 
um, merging with the collective part of the pleasure stems from our brain waves miraculously coping with those of our front and left neighbors when performing complex actions such as moving to a beat dance floor facilitate this feeling of a collective coordination although 2021 heralded the longer way to return of events the repercussions of 2020's emotional devastations continue this october researchers at the university of queens in australia published a global report on covid19 impact on mental health using 48 studies they linked to depression and anxiety disorders to covid impact indicators in western europe again north america and parts of australia and asia researchers found that these psychological disorders spiked more in the quarter spiked more than a quarter in 2020 compared to the mental health predictions of pandemic free world and the disproportionately affected women and young people definitely definitely understand that one so it continues to said shub Sh shubo star who's like a she seems like the the nice version of peggy goo right like the <laughs> the one that isn't gonna make her assistant drag her lv bags upstairs while she's on the phone to her mum or something do you know what I mean she just seems quite nice she's got a nice warm face anyway so shubo star says an um an artist and owner of yuju records or yuju ojo was diagnosed with panic disorder during the pandemic's first wave imagine that man to weather the financial strain of the lockdown she moved from her home base in mexico city to her parents house in in chion Incheon, Incheon, a city one hour from Seoul, South Korea. Imagine that's what I'm saying. Have some, like uh, maybe my sympathy is just far reaching because I've been going through some emotional things myself. So in, well, when I do feel emotional for myself, I turn off my own kind of emotion and start to kind of reach out to other people who I don't know. <laughs> so maybe this is part of it. But just imagine the emotional and mental turmoil you'll go through when you pursue your dreams you go and move to a completely different country in Mexico. Um, you maybe go there because you learned the language. Maybe you went there for love because you fell in love with some Mexican dude or something or girl. And now suddenly because of a pandemic, you have to move back home to your parents, to a city or town one hour away from flipping Seoul, which you obviously escaped from because you thought as if maybe it was too small for you and your dreams are too big. And now suddenly you're back in this place reminding you, maybe have you failed? Maybe this is where you're meant to be. Imagine the questions that you're going to be saying. You're going to be, imagine the self-speak. Fuck me, man. Anyway, it continues a quote. My parents forced me to find another job. you got to love Asian parents. And the Asian parents are the same as black parents. There's no, there's no difference whatsoever there. <laughs> as if you could go back home and just be on the couch all day. It's not going to happen. Um, my parents forced me to find another job to make money. And some Korean clubs offer me crazy cheap prices to play. That's going to be brutal too. You're used to getting paid a grand for a gig. And now suddenly they're offering you to pay, to pay for 50. Before you made 50 work. And now, uh, you know, 50 sounds like they might as well give you two pounds. So that's going to be brutal. I felt like my career disappeared, she told me. As someone who overly identified with her professional success, she, which she notes was, was to her own detriment, the transition was harsh. She says, I felt like I was losing myself. After a few weeks of all of a sudden, I started to feel strange feelings, things such as the ground moving, my vision fading in and out again. These symptoms um, prompted her to seek out a psychiatrist who issued her with anxiety medication. God almighty. Imagine she had a way that she knew to, imagine she had a way that she kind of hadn't really thought about to kind of have her anxiety under some sort of control. And then out of nowhere, because of the pandemic, it triggered it in a way that she never knew. And now you're having to take meds for it. Imagine the amount of people that we've lost and we, who didn't even have a chance to get meds off the back of this. Like, that's why I say lockdowns and war and whatnot are, are so much harmful than just people going out there, living their lives and trying to be as careful as they can and obviously advising people who are at risk to take the vaccine. The whole anti-vax thing is not even worth even talking about, but if you just want to, I just think the whole like completely locking down just doesn't work, especially in the Western world. And again, they've, they've, they've tried it in other countries. They've tried it in places like Australia and New Zealand, places that are legitimately on an island. Um, and it still doesn't work. So I can't imagine what the kind of thinking was behind doing it here, especially in the UK where we had those dumb grades. Some certain places had could be, you know, freer than others. And oh, I don't know, it just encouraged people to be badly behaved and maybe take a train down to these places and then have parties. It's just like, oh. And it continues here. It says approximately seven out of 10 independent artists experience symptoms of anxiety and depression. 
liquidity panic attacks due to financial instability and fear of failure. So this digital distribution company record union found in 2019 report as a live music and entertainment industry experiences are in unprecedented period of volatility, DJs and producers in, uh, in our world need more support than ever. With venues reopening over the course of 2021, Superstar was able to gradually reduce her prescription. The most powerful antidote to anxiety was her ability to work. This is a big line, and it sounds very it sounds very Republican. Actually, it sounds very conservative, very right wing, but actually, this is the truth. And I think a lot of people kind of saw that, especially, especially for the I think especially most of the people that did the whole like anti work movement thing. If you really dig deep into that subreddit, it's not about people wanting to be lazy. It's about people not wanting to work. You know, dead end jobs that hardly pay them enough to pay their rent. So the idea behind it is that, hey, why not have the government subsidize some of our salary, similar to like a universal basic income or similar maybe to universal credit that we have in the UK. And then I can then go and do some part time work in the field that I actually want to work in, which will obviously then help the companies because they don't have to hire people full time. And then when they are coming in, they're coming in with far more experience and maybe, you know, um, years in the game, there may be somebody coming out fresh from uni. I mean, it kind of serves everyone's purpose in that regard. And that completely makes sense. But at the crux of it, they just want to work doing something they actually enjoy as opposed to working in other sort of dead-end jobs. And um, yeah, after a long period of time, you heard people even in the States saying it, especially places that weren't maybe weren't coastal, that it was all well and good getting a stimulus check, but people were actually wanting to get back to work. They wanted to be back in bars, back in parks, back with friends, whatever. Whatever it constitute being at work, that kind of community feel of maybe popping into the post office, all this sort of stuff. When you're living in a lockdown with COVID, that doesn't exist anymore. You don't go in a post office run. You don't just pop into a supermarket to get this, to get that. You know what I mean? Your whole way of navigating around your little town changes completely. So definitely people associate work with some level of normality. That's kind of, you know what I mean? And now I think even we still got the stay at home orders here in the UK and stuff like people aren't even listening to that from what I've seen, especially when I go on my runs. People just generally just want to go to work just so they can have a change of scenery. So they're not just stuck indoors all day. So I think people underestimated, I think in general, in the Western world, or the governments in general, I think they overestimated how much importance people actually put on their jobs and they underestimated how much jobs contribute to people's overall happiness and wellness when it comes to life. Because, you know, maybe you have, maybe all your friends in, in actual life are only at work. Maybe you don't have any other friends outside of that. Maybe the person that you're hooking up with lives is at work. Maybe you just have a good time being at work in general and you can kind of associate with all these other things that you do outside of it, whether it's going to play football, hang out with people. Like, you know what I mean? There's, there's loads of things that kind of spawn off the fact that you're in, in and around the area that you're working or traveling home, bumping into a colleague you haven't seen in a long time. Uh, so I, I'm not surprised that that was, a, that was a really, really good line. It continues. Um, no, she said here, there's a quote here. She says, all the time I played, um, I literally said, yeah, da 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 yeah all the time i played i literally cried tears of joy that's just gratitude and not being back at home in it in, in this small town outside of korea with your parents forcing you to get a normal job or telling you to get back into medicine i can definitely feel that she continues her continues article it says here for some individuals freedom from social restrictions was a saving grace for others it was a creator and you found complications caroline whiteley a berlin-based music journalist dj and resident at the munich's radio eight thousand or eighty thousand considered herself fortunate to have avoided the financial free fall that plunged many artists during the pandemic or plagued sorry um, but her mental health also suffered in unexpected ways during the first parties of 2021 the self-described extravagant extrovert why am i keep messing up my words today um maybe it's dyslexia you never know you know maybe it's like un undescribed dyslexia or that was i think called self-described self-diagnosed dyslexia um Undiagnosed test, yeah, maybe it might be. Um, the self described extrovert abruptly found herself confronted with social anxiety, a condition defined by a persistent, intense fear of being judged by others. That's mad, isn't it? To be somebody that's within, just somebody that lives in Berlin, who's a music journalist and also, you know, has a show on a big Munich radio station to be diagnosed with social anxiety that must be a mind fuck in it a condition defined out of the out of practice from the party circuits usual light-hearted rapport whitely confessed she felt somewhat overwhelmed by seeing some people who were a regular part of my going out life pre-pandemic and wasn't sure that the moment how to act 
and be natural in the flow of the night. The pandemic, she continued, also coincided with a lot of personal and professional turmoil. So going out also meant running into people that I collaborated with and being confronted with the reality of everything that I went through. Yeah, having to bump into somebody that fired you before the pandemic because they can't afford furlough or whatnot or to, you know, whatever, that must be a little bit hard to take. Um, but also, I definitely agree or kind of relate to feeling really awkward and not knowing what to do i think the first parties and raves that we went to they were really well organized yeah really well put together things mostly innovation type stuff and i wasn't the most i wasn't the best company let's just say that um i didn't really i never felt like i was in the groove i could never get high or drunk enough i was kind of playing catch up you know when like you're you know that dreaded thing that happens when you sometimes you used to be at work or you used to go to an actual office or an actual workplace and maybe you meet your friends after and you're late or you're delayed and you get there and everyone's already been drinking they're already like three rounds in a couple of jokes maybe someone fell over yeah you know i mean like they're in a jovial mood and you have to play catch up and it never works. You can never catch up because their ambience and their vibe started from before they even got into the bar. And you're just getting there thinking you just need to pour drinks down your gusset, down your sur- of esophagus, and that's where you're going to get back on a level and it never does happen. And that's what happened to me the first few raves. I kept taking bump after bump, drink after drink, thinking, yeah, now I'm going to get back to the groove. And I took a pill, took this, and it didn't work. And I thought, you know what, by the end of it, I just stopped. I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to just have a drink and relax. I'm not going to try and chase this dragon anymore. Um, but it was very difficult to get into a smooth, the swing of things. So much so it made me question, am I falling out of love of going out? Da, 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 da. Obviously, I wasn't. I was just out of practice because I went from DJing f- Saturday to Sunday, basically, most weekends. And then going out after my gig, so to finish, I'd go and play somewhere. If I finished at 1, 12, 11, I'd go out to another place, stay out until 6, do the same thing the next day and the next day, and then back to work on a Monday. I went from that to like nothing. Like everyone else did that to nothing, basically. So it's no surprise when I went to the first event, I wasn't even playing. I just an event I bought a ticket to to attend. I was like a little bit stiff. You know what I mean, I was like the old weird guy in the corner, just not knowing what to do. Should I bob my feet? Should I tap my foot? Should I move my shoulder or my elbow? I was really, really confused. Um, so I definitely, 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 definitely understand that one. Um, but yeah, definitely check it out. It's a long article, not going to read the entire thing, but I thought the opening bits were really um, interesting in terms of giving you an insight into what it must feel like if you're an actual DJ and you're going through something like that. And also it made me have a lot more sympathy and compassion for the tech house people out there, for the playground people out there that were just, you know, doing everything in their power to put a rave on, to go and DJ somewhere. It just seemed a bit insane to me in the beginning because I was like, hold on, no one else in music is being able to perform because if you're working in the music industry, unless, you know, maybe if you're an artist or you can sing or you can maybe up your streams and maybe do whatever, but for the most part, everyone relies on an audience and no one else could perform, but DJs felt like they had the right or they were entitled to have a career above anybody else like their job had to go on it must go on and um they went and played everywhere they played in you know middle of deserts like i saw that video of nina kravitz people dancing in hula hoops um you know, Gerd, Gerd Janssen played some really weird social distance party too where he was in some plastic box and people were dancing in circles. There was loads of quote-unquote open airs, illegal raves, but it just it just never stopped. But I guess in terms of that kind of uh, primal response, that kind of makes sense, right? People just wanted to escape the hellhole that they were going through on a daily basis and the only way to do it in them you know the, the way that we all know how to do it is just to get flat out drunk and high and what's the best place to get flat out drunk and high a nightclub especially when it's dark especially when everyone's going through what they've gone through and you're all kind of gone there and you're all kind of because i'd imagine those playgrounds as shit as they looked on the phone via those kind of clip channels and places and those instagram accounts i bet in real life they looked they were quite fun I bet they were fun. I bet they were quite fun to go to those playgrounds because everyone went there with a good attitude because they were so grateful to be going to a place where somebody was putting on some music and people were bobbing their feet and having a good time. I'm sure they were a good vibe. And I can only imagine for an artist if you had no ability to make any income and then suddenly somebody's DMing you and telling you do you want to play in this playground, you're going to go. Who cares if a couple of people make some dumb comments under your Instagram picture or i make a video on it who cares it's just noise just ignore it and it'll pass over a week anyway so i definitely understand why people took that risk um having read what i read because i can only imagine having to work so hard to get that sort of career that's very lucrative that everyone kind of wants super in demand and then choo, it gets pulled away from you it must be kind of a brutal pill to take so yeah definitely check it out i recommend it it's called 
um, 2021 Reflections, The Hidden Cost of the Pandemic Era Nightlife, available on Resident Advisor. Check it out. Do not wait. Do not delay. It's a very, 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 very interesting.